Hi guys, just me for now. Hopefully Peter should be joining us later on to show his lovely skills and this lovely topic. Um, and that topic is picture communication systems, commonly referred to as PECs. You probably know it like this. Uh, PECs actually refers to picture exchange communication systems and that's like a trademarked copyrighted program. Um, but for now, I think just for ease, we're just gonna call it PECs. So PECs is a form of alternative and augmentative AAC communication that we would offer or choose for a learner when their vocal verbal speech is not actually coming as quick maybe as we would like it. Um, there's some research to show that sign language is actually a better alternative or a better AAC method um, in terms of how fast it gets the learner onto vocal verbal. There's probably a few reasons for that. Uh, one is that your sign your signing tools are always with you, your hands, the same as your mouth is always with you. Whereas the book is not always there, you know, as good as we all try to be in terms of like having it on a little book or a backpack, or, you know, you have your app with you the whole time. Really, it could be out of batteries or, you know, you left it down to be cleaned or the picture that you want has fallen off because the Velcro was old. So there can be challenges in terms of like just the availability of the language system. Another reason that like the research would uh, would kind of hypothesize that uh, signing is maybe more effective in promoting vocal verbal is that it's not a selection based a topography. So what we say there is, you know, I'm thinking right now, hmm, it's coming up to lunchtime. I would really love a bowl of soup. It's quite a nice autumn day. I'm going to have a bowl of soup. Okay, grand. That involved some, some form or some mechanism within my mind of going, what do I actually want? Okay. Um, and then thinking, oh yeah, it's soup that I want. Whereas if you're going just to nearly use this as a menu board, you can go, I actually am not bothered thinking about what I want. I'm just going to mindlessly pick what's off my food page. Oh yeah, that's what I'm going to have. So it can kind of become a menu option instead of actually like the whole process that's involved with language. So that's maybe just something to be aware of um, that some of the research would say that the sign language is maybe a better option for vocal verbal communication. However, I would say as well, research can be made to make whatever point it wants so go with what your own skills and your own abilities and your own learner skills strengths abilities are you know some children really struggle with gross motor imitation or even with basic motor movements if that's your child then maybe a pex option is a better one for you than the sign um, maybe you're already very very familiar with pex and you're confident that this learner is going to pick it up very quickly and that it will be a really quick nice easy tool to use within your environment well maybe then pex is the option for you but just to highlight that that's where where the current literature is okay um maybe another interesting fact there as well is that pex was actually developed by a bcba gosh golly all the things in ireland that say aba is not that great so doctors laurie frost and andy bondy one of them is a speech and language pathologist and one of them is a bcba so you know aba really does have a lot to offer in terms of looking at the function of how language develops and why we use the language that we use so just kind of wanted to put that in there the channel is called this is aba so we, we do need to still remember that um, while we want to remember that it is ABA, I don't want you to become hooked or hung up on um, the different types of procedures or the correction procedure and the four step backwards. This is really intended for um, early practitioners or parents who don't have that much expertise in ABA. So I'm not going to be using really technical terms like that or like the four step backwards chaining da 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 da, da procedures. You're just going to watch what I'm doing and you guys do it at home. That's pretty much what we're looking at, hopefully when Theodore uh, cooperates later on. Okay, so enough of the background information. Let's actually look at PECs. Okay, this is my textbook. I've had it a couple of years. I had to do a little clean up on it before it was suitable for filming. Um, you know, you typically have some kind of a hard cover, and then you have all your different pages inside with more vocabulary. Um, the icons usually will be in three strips down the front. Okay, and the reason for that is that actually you're looking at scanning ability as well. Okay, so you're looking that the learner can go up and down left to right and diagonally and now one of my pictures has actually just fallen off but that should also be three three and three and that gives kind of a nice array that your 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 visual scan your visual scanning skills also have to work on um maybe the next thing to look at then would be the pictures themselves okay or the icons themselves so these are the icons that i have on some of mine and i'm purposely picking this one because i want to show you something kind of important uh some of the commercially available programs such as board maker 
um, would have some kind of more like a cartoony uh, comic strip diagram. I much, much prefer personally um, the real objects. I don't know that there's any literature to say that that's better or worse one than the other, but I think it's always a little bit clearer. It's such a difficult concept to say, well, this cartoon means this actual thing means this picture. So why don't we just go with the actual picture? Most importantly, probably is actually that you want to have the word of the object printed on the bottom. Now, that's not necessarily for the learner. That's more for you as the conversational partner. So this, for example, I'm not sure what you would call that, but I would call it my rings, my rings, um, colors, stackers, numbers, anything else like that. What this particular PEX has actually called it, this person has called it online, is the color sorcerer. Now, that would be the last thing I would call it. So it's important that the, all the adults or all the teachers, uh, all the conversational partners in your learner's environment are using the same language. We're talking about early learners. We're talking about using PEX as a method or mechanism to get vocal verbal speech started. If that is your goal, and that's what we're talking about in this one, then you're going to want it to be a consistent term. Okay, you're going to have to be the filter there. So, you know, this is probably a better example of a good language of, of a good target that was chosen. And it says phone. You could call that Fisher Price phone. You could get that the roly poly phone. You could call it a telephone. But here it is. It says we're calling it phone. Everybody is going to say phone, 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 phone when that's exchanged. Okay. Um, that's kind of oh, one more thing on the on the actual icons themselves. You're looking for quite I hope you can see that the laminate is kind of glossy there. You're looking for a good bit of an edge on your um on your paper between your paper and the edge the paper and the edge of the laminate and that's just for saving your icons. You don't want them to be peeling the whole time. Um and they yeah you just don't want them to be peeling the whole time so i'm going to pause there for myself and hopefully theodore should be joining us in a few minutes in a few seconds to actually show how we're going to get pecs to elicit vocal verbal language okay <laughs> 